I've pretty much been rock counting my whole life and recently I decided I might get a little more serious about this than what I have before. And so I started reading some books and articles and watching YouTube videos and I realized that, wow, I, I really don't have the tools to do this and I love tools so this, this is going to be really good. I'm going to get some new tools. So in the process of reading and watching, I discovered that, wow, I need a rock hammer. I better get a rock hammer and I've got to find a rock hammer. And then the more I researched about rock hammers, you're not really supposed to hit the rock with the rock hammer. So I thought, okay, well, any old hammer will do then. One that I pick up at the garage sale for 10 cents, maybe that would be all right. Or maybe something I get free when people are just trying to unload a bunch of really old, ugly tools. So that's what I decided to do. Just pick up a few items at the garage sales, pick up a few things that people are just trying to get rid of, since you're supposed to use a chisel with your rock hammer, well, chisels are a dime a dozen. So get an old chisel, get an old hammer. Who needs a rock hammer? So that was my first discovery. And then I decided, you know, really what I, I guess I am after watching videos and looking at books is that I think I'm the rock hounding minimalist. So here's, here's my biggest tool that I use right here. The old uh, grocery paper, paper or plastic sack. Uh, plastic is better than paper in case you're, you're at Lake Michigan or someplace like that. So that's, that's my go-to. And maybe I need to double bag it because I pick up quite a few rocks. Uh, but that's, that's the first thing. Then a scoop. Okay, so I found this scoop. It was uh, pretty cheap, just a plastic little thing. And I just drilled a bunch of holes in it. So another nice tool instead of spending a lot of money on something fancy. And here's my, here's my go-to bucket. Uh, this is something that I drilled holes in. I, it might have been a paint bucket or drywall mud bucket or something like that. I drilled a bunch of holes in it. So I'll walk along with this like if I'm out walking in a creek or maybe in a, uh, in a lake. Then I'll walk along with this. The holes allow the water to drain out and I don't have to worry about it being a, a huge mess. And the other thing is I'm not going to be able to pick up very many rocks with a little bucket like that because some states are really picky about how many rocks you pick up. And then when I get back to the car, I have another little bucket that doesn't have any holes in it and it's a, a reject from my wife. So apparently this wasn't a good enough bucket for her. So that fits nicely in there and voila, I've got my walking bucket. Now, if in fact you think you need a bigger bucket than that, there's always something like this. And what are these, 10 cents or free? So I have one of those as well. And one thing that it does is it holds a lot of tools that you may or may not use. So. Here's a little pry bar. This was uh, my dad's. He, I don't know what he used it for. He grew up on a farm and had a lot of tools, loved old tools. So I inherited this. It's kind of a nice little probe. I've taken it with me on rock hounding trips. I've used it. Never, never used it. Just carried it. And here's my version of a rock hammer. It's not a rock hammer, but one thing it does do it hits a chisel really nice. And this chisel, by the way, just happened to be a freebie from the Union Pacific Railroad. I used to work for the Rock Island and we were working with the Union Pacific one day on a big derailment. And when everything was done, the guys from the UP were handing out free tools. So uh, my chisel has a U and a P on it. And that is for Union Pacific. And this hammer was something that got handed down to me by my dad. I have no idea what kind of hammer this is. It's not a rock hammer, but it hits the chisel just fine. And then another hand-me-down from my dad. And man, this thing has really taken a beating over the years. Uh, just a little kind of pry bar type thing. And this was all bent when I got it, but I just heated it up and pounded it out so it's a little more straight. But here's another thing that free or 10 cents the, at a garage sale. Nobody sees any value in these kinds of things, but 
they're perfect if you want to carry them on your rock hounding trip. And I have carried that before. And how many times did I use it? Zero. I never used it. I just carried it. So now some of these books and videos, they'll tell you to carry a maul like this. Not me. I'm not carrying something like that. It's bad enough. I'm carrying other tools that I don't ever use. This right here, I've carried this before. The only time I used this was when a friend wanted me to dig a rock out for him that was pretty big. And so I did dig it out. And the reason I have this is because I thought, wow, I might need <laughs> maybe a shovel sometime. And so this I got at Army Surplus. I figure if it's good enough for our soldiers to dig a foxhole, it's good enough for me to carry on a rock hounding trip. So this folds up very nicely. If I wanted to, I can put it in my backpack. Not that I really want to carry it. I have carried this before and really only used it one time. That ought to tell you something. And then here's another chisel. Now this also is a hand-me-down from my dad and pretty much everything handed down from my dad has just been beaten to pieces. But this is a great chisel. I love this size of chisel because when I get home with a geode, for example, I use this, score a line around the geode, keep tapping it, and then whack it a couple of times, and voila, I've got a geode that's open. And then last but not least, a toothbrush. Because, no, after, after you get something dug out, then you might want to clean it off a little bit and decide whether you really want to take it home or not. Because if there's a 25 pound rule in the place where you're looking, it's better just to leave some of that excess behind. So I don't carry a lot of things home. I've got this, this nice lightning stone right here, but I don't have very many of them because I mean, if you have four or five, then why do you really need that many? Now this is either a game ball or it is a hammer stone. And I found that this year. Love that little baby. Uh, very light. Uh, this is the mystery. And uh, some nice double terminated crystals in this geode here. Here's a bunch of little geodes that I found. And this, this geode was already broken in half like this. And it just makes a nice little bowl for the little geodes. So I do enjoy the rock hounding and I do pick up some big things. But typically, I'm not wanting to take a big barrel like this. I wanted to take a little bucket like this and a scoop, but my main tool right here from the grocery store and the boots. And no matter how tall your boots are, you're always going to get a little bit of water in there. So these people that are out there with the, the overalls, they've got the right idea. I think it looks a little stupid. I saw one guy in a actual wetsuit. It looks a little stupid when you're in Lake Michigan and you're like in six inches of water. But who cares what you look like, right? As long as you take home some treasures. That's the way I look at it. This is Tim Talks About Everything. I hope you enjoy this. Now, if you're out there and you've got a pickaxe and all those things that look like they're brand new, um, more power to you. I'm not putting you down at all. More power to you, I admire you. I just don't want to carry all those tools. I'm really a minimalist when it comes to carrying stuff around because I'd rather just carry the rocks home. God bless. See you next time.